We all know The Little Prince, the French classic written by the French aristocrat Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. The Little Prince has been published in every existing language in the world and has maintained itself as a bestseller in most countries where it was published. The agent who sold the book rights to Harcourt Brace Jovanovich paid to The Little Prince the highest compliment a literary agent can pay to any book. He said, and I quote, I have lived like a king with just the 10% I get from The Little Prince. That book is a gold mine, end quote. The book that touched the heart of a few generations was left unfinished by its author. It ended with the heartfelt plea of saint Exupéry asking to be comforted by anyone who found his little friend. Now the little prince has been brought back to us by his niece, Isati de Saint-Simon, in the enchanting story, The Return of the Little Prince. In her book, she answers the plea of saint Exupéry with the understanding of someone who knows how to see with the heart as she is closely related to saint Exupéry and his world, not only by family ties, but also in spirit. The Return of the Little Prince as the Little Prince are both true accounts of the ultimate search of a human being for the world of life which is hidden within us. Isati leads us into that magic world with a whimsical story which both children and adults are sure to love. The hearts of people were made ready for the return of the little prince by saint Exupéry. He touched the heart of Isati. And now in turn, she touches the heart of a new generation with her story. The book has been also illustrated by Isati. Her drawings are charming and have the same childlike and innocent quality as those of saint Exupéry. The Return of the Little Prince is a perfect continuation of a wonderful story that is close to most of our hearts. About Isati, the best thing I can do is to introduce her to you. I do not want to place her. I only want to say that maybe because she has found the Little Prince, there's magic about her and about everything she touches. Judge for yourselves. Here is Isati. Isati, tell us a little bit about yourself and your connection to saint Exupéry and the Little Prince. Huh. Um, about myself, well, um, there are certain things that I see about myself. Uh, for instance, in my eyes, I see a dreamer. Uh, in my chin, I see someone with a very strong will, very one-pointed. Uh, in my hands, I see a person who likes to make the dreams come true, makes them real. And um, my hair, you can see, free. I don't like to be contrived, but natural. Just let it be for what it is. Well, that's about everything I want to say about myself, because I don't like to put an image of myself out or have an image of myself because I have learned that uh, we all change constantly and we are constantly growing. So um, that's most important to really know that we are constantly changing. But um, about saint Exupéry and my connection with the little prince, well, see, saint Ex was married to my aunt Consuelo, the saint Exupéry, and it is she who taught me how to read French in The Little Prince. And as I learned to put letters together and decipher the meaning of words, I discovered the magic hidden behind the book and, and, and the drawings, see? Because I could see the drawings first, but I didn't know what 
what they meant, what was happening. So this is the way I penetrated the world of Santex and the Little Prince. And they became my very, very special childhood friends. As all children, I had the magic quality of knowing naturally that which is real. I never doubted for one second that Santex was writing about a true experience. I knew that there was a hidden message in the Little Prince for whomever could understand with capital U. <laughs> and uh, I felt Santex was saying to me, watch out for grown-ups. They have forgotten how to see. Children know how to see. Only children know. So keep your childlike vision and search for my friend. The little prince is real. And if you're a child, you'll be able to see elephants through boas. And, and, and you will find that spot where he can be found. Just wait patiently when you find it. Wait patiently under the star. Chances are that you too will meet him. If you do, please let me know that he's back. Don't leave me so sad. And see, it is that last page of some text that I used to, to read. And I used to cry so much when I read that page. This is what started it all. Uh, one day, I said to myself, when I grow up, I'll find the little prince and I'll be the first one to let Santex know that he's back. And <laughs> but Santex Superi wasn't alive anymore when you were born, isn't that true? Well, that, that wasn't true for me. First of all, my aunt Consuelo never spoke of, uh, of Santex like if he were dead. Maybe ne because, see, she never saw his dead body. They never found it. And the day his airplane disappeared, there were no reports of attacks. The other five pilots who were flying the area said that he never reported engine failure. So his airplane just vanished, never to be found. So to me, he has always been alive. He left just like the little prince left, just like it was fit for him to go. And as I saw things then, and I see them now, Santex is much, much more alive than many people that I see moving around every day. Also, you have to see, Aunt Consuelo <laughs> used to tell me about his adventures, magnificent adventures, you know, his spirit and his dreams. So I learned to love and understand him. I always cried when I read the last page of The Little Prince. I used to stare at that page with the saddest landscape in the world and promised to myself to help Santex out of his sadness. And uh, also, also I wanted to help the rose and the drunk man and the vain man, the geographer, the king, all of them, all of these characters, I wanted to help out of the problems. It was only natural, you see, for a child to feel obliged to help all the loved ones. Now, I do, I feel like this today, too. I feel that there's many people stuck in those planets, you see? And this book can help them, too. So. Well, that was all right <laughs> for a child, but, but didn't that change as you grew up? Oh, no. As I grew up, I read and reread The Little Prince, and I, I felt all along the desire to help. It made more sense. I, 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 I started to search, you know? I didn't know even for what. I felt that many of us have that deep inner longing and we don't even know what is it that we want. And, and that's why the little prince, I think, is so loved around the world. Because deep inside, we're all looking to find that little prince. So in my life, I felt I followed, you see, the directions. So I closed my eyes opened my heart and started to search. Now, as the years went by, um, <laughs> sometimes I forgot, you see? I opened my eyes, 
I listened to the reasonable voice of the grown-up in me, and I got lost. I got confused and lonely. And one day, all of a sudden, I... <laughs> he wants to go. <laughs> okay. One, one day, I found all of a sudden, my, I was in that magic place. Uh, and... Um, Unexpectedly, I, 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 I found the landscape, the loneliest landscape of the world. And there was no doubt about it. I knew that that was the place. Santex described it so really well. And so I followed Santex's advice, sat quietly under the star. And uh, what happened to me is the story that I have called, rightfully so, the return of the little prince. Now, Isati, let me play the devil's advocate here. Some people may think that you were capitalizing on the book and the name of your famous uncle, and they may just say, why doesn't she write her own book? What do you have to say to these people? Huh. Well, I understand. See, not everybody is able to see sheep through boxes. So I have to explain. The Return of the Little Prince is my own story. It's a book about my own life experience and my search for truth. It has, of course, the same essence as the Book of Santex. It has the same essence also as the search of the Buddha, because that's the way it was, is, and will always be. See, the outside process of finding that spot may be slightly different or altogether different, but the desert, the magic spot, with the lonely star and the prince will always be the same and uh, that's all I can say you see I use the of course the characters that are known to me that are close to my heart so it's natural that I that I call this book the return of the little prince and put the, the images connected to what I know but that's all I can say to those people. Now, let those who have understanding understand. There are people that will always say, that's a hat, and I can do nothing about that. You see, I will only say to these people, try reading my book as a child would. Then you may profit, because only then you will know what the book is all about, and it may help you. Did you try to imitate the literary style of Santex while you were writing your book? Oh, oh no. <laughs> My God, I would never aspire to emulate Santex. That's like a monument of French literature. It's a classic. See, I, I would have shrank in fear with only the thought of trying to do that. It's not like that, no. My book came to me as a gift. You may say as a dessert after writing two very heavy treatises about the cosmogenesis and the apocalypse of our planet. And uh, these things, as you can see, are not related to Santex or the Little Prince at all. But I was like in a trance when I was writing these things. And before I knew it, there it was, the return of the Little Prince with the drawings and everything just right in front of me. The book was written like that without planning or thought. See, I'm not arrogant in that sense, and, uh, or foolish. And uh, I don't compare myself with anybody in any way. I just want to give children of this generation the gift that was given to me as a child that has helped me so much. I want to say to children of this generation, the little prince is real. Find him. And beware of the reasonable reasoning of the grown-ups, of that reasonable reasoning of grown-ups that tells you that this world of fairy tales is not real. Just keep, keep that childlike vision, and, and you will find the little prince, and it will do you a lot of good, as it did to me. And that's what I want to do with the book but no comparisons or anything like that, no intention to copy anything. <laughs> Let adults do that. <laughs>
And uh, what about the artwork? Is that of the same style? Well, that's a very different question, you see. I have the little prince in my heart, in my head, and in my hands. So I drew the little prince since I was a child. I used to do little princess, uh, you know, going to school, little princess sitting on a hill. Um, I would do the little prince all the time, so that comes easy for me. Drawing is easy for me. I do also other styles, as you will see in the white butterfly and the collectionist. But this is specific style of the one line drawing I, I love. And especially the little prince, it's like the ABCs for me. It's natural. And I love the little prince, you see? And I know him. So once I used to have a whole apartment with the little prince story in it, and, and I, had, I had the whole story, you see, in each room. I had a different thing I have in the living room. I had when the little prince is living and living the fox and the fox is giving him the secret. And she says, that which is essential we only see with the heart. And then I had also the well was covering the heating system. I had made a well and the little prince and Santex drawing out from the bucket. And then in the toilet, um, I had the businessman, <laughs> the, toil the toilet was his desk, the top of the toilet, so, and in the ceiling I had stars with mirrors that laughed, and it was beautiful, so I was very close to me, the little prince, it's very easy for me to draw that, so. And what is this other book, The Butterfly and, and what? Uh-huh, that is a book that, um, it's inspired on a gypsy song that I heard one night in Ibiza. The gypsies were singing, and um, it was very quiet, and I listened to the song, and it was really beautiful. And when I, I, it ended, I, I went to talk to them where they were singing, and they said to me, that is a song for the soul. It's about the soul. And I was really enchanted with it, so I wrote the story, and I started illustrating. I had beautiful time in Ibiza doing that. So. <clears throat> and why do you want to publish in Japan? Uh huh. Well, <clears throat> I have always felt that Japanese people have very high ethics and honor, and that's very, very important for me. I respect that. Very important. I. I also admire their business mind and their marketing capacity. I like the way they do things. In all senses, I would like to do business with them. I hear also that many Japanese businessmen are Buddhist, and they start the day with meditation. I trust people who have an inner direction and also a powerful outer action. See, I see that they, they, they have both, the Japanese. The manifestation is also powerful, not only the inner consciousness. See, that is important for me because that's what I like to do. I also meditate when I start my day. Very important. And you see, that's to me very wise. It's like going to the bank before you go to the market. And people sometimes say, I don't have time. Well, if you don't have time to go to the bank, you may find yourself in the market with no money and <laughs> losing, wasting your time. And so, now, how do you feel that your book appeals to the youth of today? Uh huh. Well, we live in very hard times right now, and it is important for children and the young to have a center of strength from which to function. I guess it's. It's important for everybody, but especially children and the young who really know that that world is real. They still know. And today, more than ever, the children and the young need to know that which is real in them and not to get sidetracked into this illusion. The little prince opened the way for me and for many, many people. And um, the return of the little prince is like a road map to the, that place of perfection. See. It's, it's a road map to that place of power and purity where regardless of what is going in the, on in the outside, you're going to find that peace and 
clarity and strength. So <clears throat> all of those things are, are very much needed today. Um, and you have been talking about hidden meaning, and I don't quite <laughs> understand. Can you explain? All right. Well, <clears throat> both the little prince and the return of the little prince are books of high initiation. Actually, I like to lecture about that because I know many people don't know, don't know anything of what is written there. But they can sense it, see, because we all have that knowing self inside, but knowing is different. So, do you understand or no? <laughs> okay, the thing to do is what I said before. Close your eyes, open your heart, and you may not only understand, but you may know. And that's what is important today, to know. And one more question. Are you planning to publish the book only in Japanese? No, no, no. See, The Little Prince has already an open market all over the world. And I, I remember when I was a child, the Countess mother, the mother of Santex, had a room where all the books of The Little Prince that have been published in every language of the wo world were there. And she, she took me to show me, and, and I could see all these languages that I didn't even know that existed. It's amazing. It's published in every language in the world. So I want to publish in Japan, but in every language, and to distribute all over the world. See, I'm looking for the company who has the capacity to do that to print and to distribute all over the world. And also, see, this is very important for me. I like to see it done in a film with the finesse, with the spirit that it needs, because the film of The Little Prince, um, of, the, of the Book of Santex, was done in Russia very beautifully, but um, it is not distributed anywhere. Now, in the United States, they murdered the story. Alan J. Lerner and Stanley Donnan did something horrible, like a plastic version of a rose, you know, <laughs> something tremendous. So I like to do the film with the spirit, with the finesse, maybe have someone like Franco Seferelli direct the film and, and uh, Ted Turner to produce it and really have a beautiful, well, the sky is the limit. Thank you.